And for the uh, full preprocessing procedure, actually you can see there are so many different steps right here. And uh, actually this is a pretty uh, complicated, but if you want to do it in a simple way, in a simple way, actually, again, you can use the, you can use so-called the batch process right here. And in this slide, actually, uh, you can see that we will, uh, in the very first step, we will do the correction uh, for slice timing. I will actually explain uh, wh why we need to do these kind of steps uh, behind all the process, but in this very first slide, I'd like to show you the whole procedure right here. And then the second step, we will do the realignment because during the, uh, during the imaging, you cannot guarantee that the subject really fix his head or keep his head, um, uh, didn't move his head. It's pretty hard to say so. So actually, we will check whether the uh, head has any motion during the whole scanning time. And if there is significant motion, we will do the realignment to actually use, uh, for example, the very first slide, or we can use the uh, imaging file that acquired in the middle of the scan, and let all other images realign to this specific one to ensure that actually imaging from different time point has the same uh, spatial information. Okay. And the third step would be the co-registration. As you may recall that we have two, at least two data set. One is so-called FMI EPI data set with low spatial resolution, but with the um, bold information we see. Another one is a high resolution anatomical imaging. Now we'd like to co-register the high resolution anatomical imaging to the uh, EPI imaging. So we can not only have the functional information, but also have the corresponding structural information. This is a step we are going to do. And for the first fourth step, we are going to do the normalization. This is so-called spatial normalization, that we'd like to get rid of the variation from subject's uh, head shape or head size. We like to actually unify the head shape or head follow. So this one so-called spatial normalization is trying to normalize your head shape and head size uh, with a standard uh, head image. This is the spe uh, specific step that we are going to do. And the smoothing step is actually, again, the spatial smoothing. We'd like to make the imaging looks like some more smoothing. That means a little bit blur, but actually can help us to reduce the noise that contained in the imaging. This is so-called spatial smoothing. And the final, finally, uh, we will perform the imaging segmentation. Segmentation means that we are going to classify or identify different uh, tissue type within the brain regions. We will focus on specific three different things gray matter, white matter, and uh, CSF, so-called cerebral spinal fluid regions right there. With each of the step, actually SPM will generate or create so many different files, but to uh, differentiate all the files generated from different steps, actually SPM will give a specific prefix of the file name right there. For example, if you perform the uh, slice timing, all the uh, generated file from this step will has a prefix with A, small a right there. So if you see the file name uh, start with A, actually this is the products from slice timing correction. If you see the file name uh, start with an R right here, you can see actually this is the production from the realignment. So you can see actually the prefix will accumulate it right here. You can see the first step is A, right? So you can see the file name is A right here. Then followed by the realignment, then you can see R right here. Then normalization will give you a new prefix like W. So actually you can read the prefix to see what kind of the preprocessing step actually performed or applied to this image that I said. So you can see for this one, actually I can now, the first step is actually the slice timing, A, R, realignment, W, normalization, S, actually for the spatial smoothing. So this is the way how this system worked to differentiate the different steps right there. And then for the final one, actually, segmentation will generate several different files, uh, actually start with uh, smoothing right here. 
C1 represent the gray painter, C2, white painter, uh, C3, CSF right there. And uh, you can see they may have the different files that, for example, this one. This is actually the essential one, uh, actually the six column parameters to represent the whole head motion. Three translation, three axis translation, and the three rotation angle right there. It will all recorded is in one text file right here. Okay, uh, this kind of the files will be used in the later processing step. But uh, this slide is again a lookup uh, slide or lookup table for you. That if you really want to know why I have this file within my data folder, you can just check which kind of step actually generate these kind of files. Okay. Before I explain each step in detail, I need you to start, let your computer busy um, processing. So we won't waste the time. So what you should do right now is go back to SPN menu figure right here. And now please click batch button right here. There is a batch button right here. Again, you will see a very uh, familiar environment right here. Actually, this environment is called the batch editor. Batch means that I can do so many different things in a sequential uh, order, and then we can do all the things step by step. So instead of that, click every single button manually, you can actually uh, put all the functions, all the modules in this batch. Once you set up all the parameters, you should click one button right here then all you need to do is wait, okay? So now uh, we are going to actually perform so many different steps right here. You don't really need to set up by yourself. I already set up a batch file for you. So what you should do is now click the load batch button right here. Now there is a batch underlying fmi preprocess.mate file right here. This is the setup for this batch process. And now you can see there are so many different steps that, that I already set up for you. And uh, uh, I'm not going to explain right now. I, I, am, I am to let you start working right now. So what you should do is actually, you can just actually uh, enlarge this figure a little bit. So actually you can see uh, aside these uh, steps right here, actually there are some information right here. For each step, normally you need to specify the files that are that will be processed in this specific state. However, you can see that actually only three steps, three st specific steps, this one, this one, and this one, actually demands the input. As I mentioned that if you see the left arrow with a uh, uppercase X right here, that means you need to speci specify the file right here. And for the others, actually you can only see the DEP. This actually uh, represent the dependency. That means I don't really need to specify the import files right here because it will automatically depend on what in you uh, specified in the previous step. So this is a clever design. Actually, don't really need to specify all the files right here. It will depend on the previous one. It will depend on uh, uh, just some files uh, before this step. So you can see you only need to specify the three files right here. Okay. But before we actually specify the file, we actually need to adjust the sound setup right here. So in the next slide, you can see the very first one we need to adjust is actually for this step. Why we need to adjust this file right here? Because the file path, uh, the file path is actually different between computers. This one is actually for my desktop PC, not yours. So before you can do anything, I ask you to actually modify this batch file. So it match the uh, file path uh, on your even notebook or your desktop PC. Anyway, So please go to this step right here. Just click on this one. Normalize, normalize estimate, this one. As you click this step, you can see actually there is one specific save a file called tissue probability map right here. And you can see this path is definitely not your path. It's my path. So what you need to do is actually to modify this file. So you can do, again, just double click. Now you will see, again, the file selection figure right here. 
Okay. However, there is already one file uh, be selected right here, right? So what you should do is actually unselect this. How to do so? Just click, click the, the file, left click your mouse, then you can unselect it. Or again, you can right click your mouse and select unselect all. It's the same thing. So now you are able to select a new file right here. So where this uh, tissue tissue probability map is located, actually, this file is located within the SPN12 folder. If you uh, remember the path where you actually, for example, to me, I actually uh, download the SPN12 to this specific path. You need to come to this SPN12 folder right here. Then go find a subfolder named TPM. Okay. Then you will find that there is a specific file called tpm.nii. This is the specific file you need to select. Okay, please remember it is uh, stored in uh, SPM12 folder. Just find uh, subfolder tpm, then you will find this file. Now you can just click for one time, just one click this file and press down. And now it will update it to the right, correct file pass for your computer. This is the very first thing you need to do. Okay? And next step, there are two steps that you need to, again, update the file pass for the TPM. Okay. I promise you, if you didn't change the computer for the imaging process, you only need to do this for once. Okay? So no worry about this step. Okay, so come to this segment, segment step right here. Uh, there are, you can see, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six file paths you need to modify, actually. So let's do it one by one. It takes time, but it's an essential step that you, you need to do. So again, double click. Now unselect this one. Again, I can go back to the, uh, the folder that I select. What you can do is actually you just find the previous one. Here is a selection. It will automatically list the folder that you previous, previously selected. So it's very convenient and just go to the previous option and just pick the final one. This is the final one that you just picked, this one, okay. And right here, there's a very important thing you need to do is actually within this tpm.nil file, it actually contained six, six maps for different tissue, including gram, gram matter, white matter, CSF, and also scar, scalp, and uh, I think the background tissue or something. Actually, there are six different maps within this file. Then that's why actually there are six uh, six files you need to specify. So what you should uh, what you should do is actually you need to uh, input this. You need to give this information so SBN can know that actually there are six six map content within this file. Please key in correctly. Okay, then you press enter right here. Or you can use this kind of a factor form right here. One with a space, two with a space, three, four, five, and six. Then it will actually expand expand this file into six different maps. You need to specify there are actually six maps within this file right here. And now what you can do for this very first one, you can only select the one right here. First one. Press down. The older matters, the older is very important because the very first one represent, represent the gray matter map. Okay, the second one is actually the white matter map. So what you can do right here, again, I can show you, go to this one, expand the TPM file right here, select, now select the second one. Okay, and then come to the third one, again, Come to the right folder, press this one, okay, third one. Okay, I'm not going to explain anymore, so I'm going to just go through all the all the files. Please do it by yourself. So every single time you switch the computer to do the analysis, you need to do this step because the file path is definitely different. Okay, now I pick the fifth one. Final one is the sixth one. 
Okay. I'm oh, sorry. Six one. Right here. Okay, so this is the uh, correct file path. But again, we have two segments. I will explain why we have two segments step right here. But another one, please do the exactly the same thing. Just modify the path. Again, first one, second one, third one, oh, sorry, translate, okay, third one, fourth one, it's really a tedious process, but uh, you just need to do this for once. So please be patient. First one, fifth one, and then the final one, this one. Oh, again, I need to go here, and a sixth one. Okay. Now I have modified all the paths right here. Once the modification is done, please, please do save this batch before you do anything else. Because you don't really want to go through all the modification again and over again every single time when you open this batch editor. You don't want to do so. So now, please, please just uh, save this modified batch file. You can actually overwrite. Just overwrite because you don't need to uh, just you don't need to keep the original one because this, this has the wrong file path, right? Just overwrite it. So yes, just overwrite it. So this is the very first step you need to do. And once this is done, you never need to do this step anymore if you, if you don't change the processing computer. Okay. And then what we, we should do right now is now we can really specify the import data right here. And what's the first one? Actually, we will select the directory. That means uh, the SBM will automatically switch the current folder for you. So you can have all the output or all the created data set in the correct folder. So you need to do so. OK, so let's start from the first one. Pick the right folder. So I'm going to select the right folder right here. Actually, within the process, again, I don't like to mix the process data with the raw data set right here. So I will select the process and the one back. OK, I will do this one. So I'll click the one dot right here means the current folder. Oh, sorry. Just do it again. Right here. OK. So now it's actually uh, located the process, the one back data folder right here. And then come to the slice timing slice timing right here, you need to specify the session. Session means the whole file and state for the FMI data. Now just double click. Now again, go to the processed one back. And uh, you can see it's actually only select all, only 165 five files right here. Nothing else because we didn't start the uh, process. 160 files. It, this is the right uh, file numbers for the one back. Okay, and then for the third input right here, this one is actually perform the image co-registration. So we'd like to co-register the structural imaging to the uh, functional imaging, the EPI imaging right here. So you can see the reference imaging is actually the realigned or re-sliced image. It's actually the process the EPI image right here. But now what we are going to do is to sp specify the source image right here. Now double click. Now what I'm going to do is to select actually the MP range right here. You can actually directly select the MP range and the select the file right here. However, I don't like to do so. I actually will copy, I will copy the MP range folder into the one back file. Actually, I will do so. Why? Because normally within one FMI study, we may have multiple sessions for different functional tests. For example, we have actually one back, two back, picture naming, uh, and the motor test, actually. So each one, we will perform the 
imaging co-registration. I don't want all the imaging co-registration result will mixed within this one folder. If we have one back folder, two back folder, I'd like to uh, have one specified structural image for one functional session. So actually, I will copy the mpreg into the one functional uh, folder right here. For example, one back folder right here. So I'm not going to process this one. I will actually process the file within the one back file. So if I have another folder for, for example, two back, for example, two back right here. Actually, I will again copy this MP range into this subfolder. Okay, so just I don't want to mix all the data today. This is kind of my habit to do so. So now in this situation, actually, I won't pick this one. I will go to one back. Select the MP range. I will use this this one, this structural image right here. Okay. Once everything is selected, you may see that actually the again the round batch button is now functional. So you can actually press the button. I'm going to uh, introduce each step to you, but now if you finish the setup, please just press the round batch button right here. Okay. Then you should be able to see again. The processing bar is now currently processing something. And uh, you can go back to the main app command window right here. It's actually display what is the current step right now. So now it is it's doing the slice timing correction right now. And now you can see the slice timing process is done. Now it's go to the realignment step right here. So all the process will be, uh, all the steps will be processed step by step depending on the module list, module list right here. Okay, so we can just wait. It may take, I think, uh, depends on your your PC performance. It may cost uh, five to ten minutes for one case, actually. So now we should go back to the slide. So I'd like to um, explain the each step uh, why they need to perform this kind of the preprocessing step. For the very, very first one is the correction for slice timing. Actually, although we claim that we actually have the temporary resolution around two seconds, that means we can repeatedly acquire the whole brain imaging uh, with a time interval two seconds. <coughs> but actually, um, e even in the same time point, for example, the very first time point, the different slice that are acquired during this specific time point is actually different. For example, in MRI system, actually, we may take a couple of milliseconds for acquired one single image. So, for the example, this one may acquire in the, for example, zero millisecond, but this one image slice may actually acquire in the five millisecond. Then come to the 10 millisecond, 15 millisecond, and 20 millisecond. There is actually a very slight, slightly different. Um, slice timing, actually the image timing between slides right there. And this kind of the um, difference, temporal difference, actually may cause the misunderstanding of the border signal profile right here. As you can see, this is actually the major border signal. If you claim that actually um, we acquired every single slice for this example, five slices, in the same time point, you may look the border signal in this way. The boss signal may looks like in this way. However, if you correct cor correct the uh, slice timing difference right here, you can see actually they are not uh, quite in the same time point. They are slight difference right here. So the horizontal axis represent the time axis. You can see actually this slice is acquired uh, in this time point. Then this time point, this time point, this time point, this time point. If you really want to claim that they all acquired in the same time point, you need to correct the timing. So now if you try to correct the time point from this one to this one or this one to this one, what you need to do is the interpolation. You need to interpolate the, the value from based on this one to this one. Or between this one, you can have this one. It's the integer time point right here. So this is the actual, actual both signal you should have on hand, not this one, because you actually ignore the uh, slice timing difference for different uh, image slice right here. 
So although the time is actually really, really small, it's in the millisecond level, but actually it may uh, change the, the bold profile right here. So this is the very first step you need to do for uh, the fMRI data right here. And the second step is actually to correct the head motion. Actually, right here, this is actually the uh, nominate image right here. Uh, you can see actually there is uh, some kind of position of the head movement. Uh, when you try to display all the fMI from the one single slice uh, in this image, you can see actually the brain is actually moving, but however, in a very, very small way. However, you can actually quantify the uh, head motion uh, using the realignment technique right here. So you can see the result right here. Actually, we can see uh, three translation. Translation means that the head movement allows three specific axes. For example, X represent left and right, Y represent uh, front and uh, uh, behind, and uh, Z anterior and posterior, and Z represent the um, head and the feet direction. So you can see actually, you can uh, find out across different time point right here. For example, this data set has 240 different followers or different time points right here. You can see uh, this axis translation is actually pretty obvious right here. Although the translation is actually in, I think, below one millimeter. It's actually pretty small, but uh, do, uh, it, it does exist right here. And uh, not only the translation, you can also measure the rotation. So we have three different rotation angles. Maybe I can show you this slide right here. Not only three axis translation, we can actually See pitch is more like the nodding your head and row and the yo just like, like three different uh, three different rotation angle right here. So actually, you can again try to quantify the rotation value across different time points right here. So you can see actually uh, the degree again is very small, actually under maybe 0.6 right here. There is some um, threshold that we normally use for uh, for the criteria whether we should exclude the data. If the subject actually had a head motion larger than three millimeter, and the rotation, again, larger than three degree, then normally we will exclude the data because that means the subject actually had a very significant head motion. Although you can actually correct the head motion, however, this kind of the head movement, the movement actually uh, insert a very, very huge variation or signal change for your ball signal. So even you can correct the head motion, the profile of the ball signal may still uh, affect uh, in a very, very hu uh, huge way. So actually, if we, uh, after the estimation of the head motion, we can see this figure, and we definitely will check the value. If larger than three meters and uh, larger than three degree, we will just exclude the data. That means the participant actually didn't co uh, collaborate pretty well. They didn't just uh, comply with your order that keep your head uh, fixed and uh, do not move your head. Actually, he's moving his head or something. So this is the very important uh, uh, step that we should uh, confirm the data quality. And then the co-registration. Actually, we will uh, co-register the structural T1 weighted image to the uh, EPI image right here. So you can see this one is actually the uh, FMI EPI image right here. You can see the, again, the spatial resolution is actually pretty bad right here. However, for the structural team imaging, you can clearly def uh, define the border of the gray matter and the white matter. The spatial resolution is high. So what we are going to do is actually we try to make these two images that are said within the same position or within the same location. To do so, you can use so-called the imaging code registration technique. Actually, in SPM, they use the rigid body transformation. Rigid body means that you won't actually um, change or modify the internal structure of your brain. You actually only rotate or translate your imaging. This is called rigid body. Why we do so? Because it's, uh, these two different images are actually originated from the same subject. So you don't anticipate there is any 
uh, the, the transformation of the image that actually will change the shape or something. It's only allowed the rotation of translation. And in SPN, uh, they use the rigid body transform transformation with the mutual information as the cost function. So they can automatically finish or achieve the very good image co-registration. So you can see this is a result that if you try to um, plot the boundary of the EPI data on the structural image right here, actually you can see they match pretty well. You can see the border of the brain tissue or the border of the uh, uh, ventricular area is actually aligned pretty well. So in SBN, you can either use in the automatic process or it actually give you a chance to actually to do the manual uh, co image co-registration. However, it takes time actually, and it definitely will insert some operator um, variation into this kind of image co-registration. So normally we will use the automatic process that using mutual information to do the rigid body transformation to ensure that uh, the structural image is actually uh, aligned or co-registered co to the EPI data. So now we not only have the functional information, but also we can have the clear definition of the cortex location or cortical location. And the next step would be the spatial normalization. As I mentioned that actually different participants may have different um, brain volume or brain shape. However, if we would like to uh, perform some group-wise, group-wise means we would like to pull different subjects data uh, together, that means we need to unify the spatial, spatial geometry or spatial information or spatial coordinates, whatever. So what we can do is actually, uh, there are two ways, actually. You can use the co-registered anatomical or structural imaging to do the spatial normalization. Actually, in this way, you can have a better result because the uh, spatial information uh, is actually pretty good in anatomical imaging. However, in SPM, you have another option. You can actually perform the normalization solely use the EPI data. You can do so because we also have a so-called EPI template right here. So you can actually normalize the subject EPI directly to the EPI template. You can then still have the so-called normalized EPI data. However, this, this approach may have a poor result because the spatial information contained in EPI is actually um, a little poor compared to the anatomical T1 image. So the normal procedure or the procedure that I actually uh, give to you that's stored in the page that I said is actually used this way. We will first uh, use the subject anatomical imaging to do the spatial transformation. What is the reference imaging is actually the T1 template image. As you can see, this T1 template imaging is actually acquired I think acquired based on 152 different subjects. They try to realign these 152 different subjects' head imaging. After the alignment, they try to do the imaging average. So you can see this image is kind of the blurred. It's over smoothing, I can say. However, this is actually acquired from a population. So it maybe a better representation of the average average uh, brain uh, geometry right there. So what, what we are going to do is we try to estimate how can we transform this imaging to this so-called template imaging. But in this kind of the spatial normalization, we no longer use rigid body transformation. As I mentioned, that rigid body transformation didn't allow any significant uh, change of the brain. It's only allow you to rotate or translate your brain, but not allow you to change the shape. However, in this step, we uh, anticipate to unify the brain geometry. So we need to allow so-called nonlinear, nonlinear brain transformation or nonlinear imaging transformation. So we now allow the algorithm to really modify or change the brain shape or brain geometry right now. Okay. 
And then after this kind of transformation, now you can have so-called normalized T1 right here. So this is the original or the uh, native T1 right here. And this one is actually the normalized T1. So you can see original uh, T1 is actually a little, uh, how to say, a little short in Z axis compared to the T1 template right here. Here is longer than this one. However, after the normalization, you can see the Z axis uh, growing more like to the template right here. So actually, if you have 10 subjects on hand, you will do this kind of spatial normalization to ensure all the subjects have a very similar spatial geometry. However, we only modify the spatial geometry. We didn't change, we didn't change the profile of the uh, border signal. Okay. After this kind of the estimation or transformation, we now can apply the so-called transformation matrix. This transformation matrix actually records how we how we transform one specific coordinates or the specific uh, spatial geometry to another one. In this example, is how we transfer the subject uh, geometry to the normalized geometry. So now we can directly apply this kind of transformation to the EPI data. Remember that we already co-registered co the T1 image into EPI. So we can apply the same transformation matrix directly to the subject EPI. So we can have the normalized EPI right here. This is the, the preferred process for, uh, at least for me, or I think for most of the uh, researchers, that we'd like to perform the spatial normalization through the anatomical imaging and then apply to the EPI. And then uh, we will perform the so-called spatial smoothing. As you can see right here, this is the normalized image right here. After the spatial normalization, you can see now the brain geometry is more like a unified one. It's just like a, uh, just a pretty one to me, actually. However, we will perform the spatial smoothing right here. Spatial smoothing means that we will apply a 3D Gaussian kernel. If you know the convolution, if you know the kernel, you may understand what I'm talking about. If not, you may go to one of my class, uh, one of my course called MATLAB. You can try to figure out how we can perform the image smoothing. In this case, actually, after the image smoothing, you can see this is the product. This is the result. You can see the image become more blur compared to original one. Although we may lose the spatial information, however, we have the anatomical image on hand. We don't really worry about the spatial information. In this image, we actually want to reduce the noise in the variance right here. So what we are going to do is image smoothing will actually average, or we call it weighted average. Not only with, uh, by the original pixel, but also we will consider the surrounding voxel. We consider the value from the surrounding voxel and perform the so-called weighted average, so we can generate the new result. However, once we try to do this kind of process, we try to or we will make the neighboring pixel have the similar value compared to the original one, and that's why this new smooth Im imaging looks like a more blur one right here. However, this kind of process can help us to reduce the noise because. Uh, the original assumption of the noise is more like the white noise. That means it will randomly distribute uh, in the entire image. If you do the spatial average or smoothing, it can definitely wipe out or average out all the noise com component within the image. So this approach will help us to actually increase the signal to noise ratio and also help us to have a strong, more strong statistical power after we try to do some stati statistical inference right there. There's one thing that you should keep in mind. This step, image smoothing, is not always necessary for all the FMI analysis. In particular uh, analysis such as the multivariate pattern analysis, this step is forbidden. You cannot do this step because this will break the assumption of the MVPA. So remember, sometimes we need to remove the image smoothing from our batch process because this is not necessary for some kind of things. But uh, for the brain activation analysis and for the uh, brain cognitive analysis, I think this step is essential. You can use this to improve the signal uh, to noise ratio. 
And the final step is the tissue segmentation. As I say that after the tissue segmentation, we actually will be able to um, identify which image region is the gray matter, which region is white matter, and which is CSF, cerebral spinal fluid region. You can see this is a result. Once you finish the, the image segmentation step, you will have at least a three different file. Start with C1, C2, and C3 right here. C1 for gray matter, C2 for white matter, and C3 for CSF. If you uh, just view the file uh, in the micro, you can see actually you will have pretty uh, wide region for the gray matter. Actually, the values within this region is around 0.8 to 1.0. That means you have very high probability to claim that uh, this area belongs to gray matter. Again, for one meter, you will have very high value between 0.8 to 1.0 to claim that this white or bright region belongs to one meter. Again, for the CSF. So this is actually the so-called tissue map or tissue probability map that we use to identify which is the gray matter, specifically this one. So we can uh, study the brain function specific on the gray matter region. Normally, we don't. We are not interested in one meter region or CSF region for uh, brain function or study. Okay. Normally, we focus on the uh, gray matter region right here. Okay. So. Right now, I believe my map has finished all the process right here. So you can see uh, there is completed, completed and the down message right here. That means you just finish all, all the process right here. So now you can go back to the folder right here. Now we can see this is the original image right here. OK. And uh, then uh, I mentioned that actually for the very first step, the slice timing, you will have the new files that uh, has a prefix with A right here. So you can now go into your folder. You can see, okay, there are plenty of files start with uh, the, the uh, lowercase a right here. Again, the number should be 165 right here. Let me confirm right here. You have 165 files right here. That means each original file will have the slice timing process right here. However, slice timing didn't change any uh, spatial geometry, so I think it's very hard to say uh, to see or to tell what's the difference between the original one and the correction for slice timing files right there. And then the real realignment, you can see that should start with the R. Let me check this one. Start with R right here. You can see the second word is A. That means this already has the slice timing correction, then come to the R uh, right here. And then the next step should be the uh, normalize right here. You can just click W right here. Now you definitely can tell the difference right here, so I'm going to open the new and micro right here. This one, okay. So now we can compare. On your left hand side, this is the normalized imaging. On your right hand side, this is actually the original imaging. The image geometry is pretty different. This is the original one. So you can see this is more like the subject original head shape. But this one is normalized to the standard uh, T1 template. So you can see, actually, this is more, more standard uh, geometry right here. The symmetry, the size is better. OK. And then the final one is the smoothing data. We'll start with an S right here. So now we can. Again, show the S. Let me find S right here. Oh, so many files has S. So maybe I just try to find by myself. This one. Start with S right here. So I can see this is the uh, smoothing data set right here compared to only normalize, uh, only the normalization, but no image smoothing right here. So this is the smoothing data set. Actually, for the subsequent analysis, we will use this this final one, this smoothing data set for the uh, analysis, not this one. We will use this one. And for the segmentation step, you can see that we may have C1, C2, and C3 file right here. This will actually, I think, saved in the subfolder of the structural imagery, MP-RIDGE, right here. 
So you can see, actually, we have so many different C1, C2, C3, and also C4 and C5. You can just check. C1 is for gram meter region. C2 for one meter region. C3 for CSF. C4 actually for, I think, for SCAR, SCAR region right here. And uh, C5 for scalp and uh, I think some surrounding, surrounding tissue right there. So the very first the one, C1, is the one we are going to focus on the brain function, is this one, OK? So with this uh, process and with all the files, you may say that, OK, we finished the imaging preprocessing. But there is one more step I'd like to remind you is this one. I may recommend you to always check your data. How to check? When you use this kind of the batch process, it's actually pretty hard to see each step because everything will sequentially automatically be processed. So what you can do is actually SPN um, will generate some kind of the log file. That means the record of the process. It will start with the uh, SPN. So now you can search for a file, start with SPN, this one. It's actually a PS file, PostScript file. If you want to see this, you, you definitely need to convert this to the PDF file so we can read this. So I give you a link. Actually, this is an online, online converter for free use. So actually, you can, you can go to this website. And what you can do is upload. Just upload this file, this script file, to the and, uh, processed, sorry. Processed and one back. OK, so now you can see SPN this one okay you will see there is a specific day that uh, the day you process the data is well listed as the file name okay then just press convert convert to pdf file so you can just uh, check the process steps just wait a couple seconds okay so now this is the pdf file that uh, it converted for you so just open this and now you can see this, this is the log file that, for example, how the subject, how our participant um, cooperate with us. So you can see the translation is actually pretty small because uh, this is only in sub-millimeter level. So I think uh, our participant did a very good job. And translation, as you can see, is around 0.1 to minus 0.4 degree right here. Yeah, it's still good enough. And then this, this sheet is actually help you to see whether the imaging co-registration co doing good or not. So you can see this actually the, the, the corresponding cross here right here. So you can see the imaging boundary right here. So I think at least you can uh, check this essential part, the uh, head motion. This is a very important one. If the head motion is too large, I definitely will recommend you to exclude the data set or reacquire the data set from the participant. OK. So I think that that's all the steps that uh, normally we can use SPM to do so. However, if you look very carefully into the batch file, you may find out there are so many different parameters that I may spend some time in the next week to tell you why we or how we set up this kind of parameter. OK, so I think that's all for today. Is there any question?